The biggest collapse since 2008 just happened. In today's show, I'm going to talk about Silicon Valley Bank, why it collapsed, and what you need to do right now to protect your money. All I need is on a generational wealth podcast. Guys, let's hop right in. Shout out to all of you who checked out my three keys to financial freedom. If you haven't done that yet, make sure you go to the link in the comments below. This is going to show you how to stop trading time for money. We got to go straight into this topic, guys, because we got much to discuss. This is the largest bank collapse since the 2008 recession. This makes the second largest bank failure in U.S. history. And it is critical that you know what is going on. Now, let me give you guys a little bit of background about what's happening. Like I keep saying, this is the largest bank collapse in U.S. history next to what happened in 2008. And in order for you to understand what's going on now, you need to look back to the 2008 recession because history leaves clues. If you don't know what happened then, it's going to be hard for you to understand what's happening now. So in the 2008 financial crisis, there was a severe economic crisis that went throughout the world. So many people was devastated by this. It started in the United States, but it spread globally. Now, this 2008 crash was based on the collapse of the United States housing market. A lot of you guys are familiar with the housing crash, and we're seeing a lot of that today. Back then, there was a U.S. housing market which caused the failure of a lot of large banking institutions. You've probably heard about banks like Lehman Brothers, Bear Stearns, and Washington Mutual. Now, the reason why this crisis happened back then is because of all of the mortgage delinquencies and foreclosures. A lot of people could not afford their homes. That started a significant decline in mortgage-backed securities. All this is financial lingo for banks started crumbling. All these different mortgage loans was being passed out like candy. People couldn't afford to make the mortgage payments. Banks went under. A lot of banks took heavy losses, and some of those banks went bankrupt. Now, to prevent the financial system from collapsing entirely, the U.S. government stepped in. You're seeing that happen now. In 2008, during the housing crisis, the U.S. government intervened with TARP and ESA. What's the TARP and what's the ESA? The government created programs tried to bail out the big banks, okay? When you talk about these different programs, it was to put money into these different financial institutions, these big banks, to try to stabilize the economy. They tried to stop the bleeding. Now, despite all of that, there was so much crisis. There was so much damage that was already done this went throughout the world. Many people lost their jobs. Many people lost their homes. The unemployment rate skyrocketed. In fact, the 2008 financial crisis was one of the worst economic times in modern history. And many people are still suffering from that today. This is the reason why this banking collapse is so important. Now, not only was this something that affected the United States, it created a ripple effect around the world. And the reason why that happened on a global scale 
is because there are so many countries who invest money into U.S. banks because everything is tied to each other. When one big thing goes down, everything goes down. It starts to create a domino effect. And this is exactly why the government stepped in on a bailout in 2008. And now you're seeing it happen all over again. The 2008 recession highlighted how fragile the global financial system is. It exposed how much the banking systems really need to be regulated. And so the question is, what if that happens again? See, if I just go into this podcast and I talk about how this big bank goes down, that really doesn't matter to you because you don't have any background. You don't have any history. You don't have any context. But if you remember everything that happened from 2008 when those banks went down, well, now you need to think about what's happening right now because this is the second largest collapse. So if this happens again, if 2023 becomes the year of the big collapse, if another major bank were to collapse, like what just happened right now with Silicon Valley Bank, the consequences of that for the economy can be devastating. And just like in 2008, it can go worldwide. Some of the consequences include large risk, risk throughout the entire financial system. Like I said before, one large bank's collapse creates a domino effect on the entire economy. This is how the economic crisis starts. This is because well, all the banks are interconnected. You got to think, one bank is lending and borrowing with other banks. Money is being exchanged. So when you see one big bank go down, there's a lot of other banks that are tied to it. And then you got to think about job losses because think about all of the companies that rely on the banks. Think about how many different companies are borrowing from the bank. If the bank system collapses, this can cause a wave of unemployment. Now, guys, I'm trying to bring you up to speed on everything that's happening. Yesterday, it was announced that the government would step in with a bailout. And that's good news. But I'm just trying to give you guys a general background on the types of things that happens whenever there's a collapse, whether it's this time in 2023 or there are other major crashes to come. I just want you guys to be aware, whenever you hear that a large bank crash, this is always what can happen. People can lose jobs. There can be a massive credit crunch. When I'm saying credit crunch, if a bank has collapsed, that means it's going to be hard for individuals, people, to get credit. It's going to be hard for the average person to be able to borrow if the banks are shut down. And that's going to stop growth in the economy. Another big thing that all of us need to be aware is stock market crash. Stock market crash. If the banks collapse, that means there's going to be a very sharp crash that could happen in the stock market. The reason why the stock market could crash is because all of the investors are thinking about the banks. If the banks are shut down, how many people are even trying to invest their money? What we see right here with, with what's going on with Silicon Valley Bank, a lot of people are pulling their money out. If you find out that the bank that you go to is shutting down, 
you're going to want to pull all of your money out because you don't want to lose it. And this is the reason why the government steps in. The government steps in to not only protect people, but also provide the economy with a sense of calm. But when the government steps in, like how they did in 2008, this is when they start doing all of these financial bailouts, which could increase public debt. As you already know, the U.S. is already very high in debt. So all of these things create big problems. Again, to recap, the collapse of a major bank has a significant effect on the economy. This includes job losses, credit crunch, and stock market crash. This is why the government steps in, because they want to stop some of these things from happening. Now, you got to know, the banks are highly regulated. And banks, they go through stress tests to try to prevent a collapse from happening. But every now and then, despite all of the tests, something happens where there's an unforeseen event in society. And that leads to the bank's failure. What we're seeing right now in 2023 is unlike what we have seen since the 2008 financial crisis. Guys, let me now show you the article, okay? If you're on, make sure that you smash the like button. Make sure that you share this so that way people can get prepared. It says, regulators shut down Silicon Valley Bank and biggest collapse since 2008 financial crash. The FDIC over the lender, okay? FDIC is FDIC insurance, making sure that people can still get money even if the bank goes under. The 16th largest U.S. bank and a tech industry favorite after a run on deposits and concerns about a broader crisis that led investors to dump other bank stocks. Now guys, we're not gonna go through the entire article, I'm just showing you all the receipts so that way you know what's happening. I just got to prove to you what I'm saying is true. Notice what it says right here. Silicon Valley Bank collapses in biggest bank failure since Great Recession. Breaking news. Second largest bank failure in U.S. history. This is the time you got to protect your money. Silicon Valley Bank, one of the tech sector's favorite lenders, is shutting down. The California Department of Financial Protection and Innovation said Friday that it was taking over and closing the distressed bank to protect deposits, naming the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation as its receiver. The FDIC has formed a separate entity where all insured SVB deposits will be available by Monday morning. In other words, this is just making sure that everybody that had money in the bank that was secured, they were insured despite the collapse. It says, the closure marks the biggest bank failure since the 2008 financial crisis and the second largest in U.S. history after Washington Mutual collapsed during that industry-wide meltdown, according to FDIC data. As of the end of December, the Santa Clara, California-based bank, the 16th largest bank in the country, had $209 billion in assets with more than $175 billion in deposits. As with other FDIC member banks, SVB deposits are insured up to $250,000 per depositor. So guys, I just want y'all to see what's happening. I want you to see how all of this chaos is happening. 
I've been warning y'all for years on this channel. The market crash is coming. I've been trying to tell y'all, you need to get ready because you know what is about to hit the fan. Now, like I said, the government stepped in on Sunday. Look at what Elijah Israel just said. This is heavy. They're getting ready to control the banks and will usher in the digital currency. Crazy times, y'all. Crazy time. I need y'all to see what's happening. Now, when you look at this article, it says the U.S. government moves to stop potential banking crisis. Now, this is where the feds are trying to intervene. The U.S. government took extraordinary steps to stop a potential banking crisis after the historic failure of Silicon Valley Bank, assuring all depositors at the failed institution that they could access all their money quickly, even as another major bank was shut down. The announcement came amid fears that the factors that caused the Santa Clara, California-based bank to fail could spread. Regulators had worked all weekend to try to find a buyer for the bank, which was the second largest bank failure in history. Those efforts appear to have failed Sunday. So I want you to see. People were working around the clock to try to stop this from happening. They still couldn't do it. In a sign of how fast the financial bleeding was occurring, regulators announced that New York-based Signature Bank had also failed and was being seized on Sunday. So I want you to notice this. This is not just talking about one bank. This is talking about other banks starting to fail. This is the domino effect that I was telling you guys about earlier. In a sign of how fast the financial bleeding was occurring, regulators announced that New York-based Signature Bank had also failed and was being seized on Sunday. At more than $110 billion in assets, Signature Bank is the third largest bank failure in history. So you literally had back-to-back -back days of the second and third largest bank failure in history. In 2023, it's getting real. I want y'all to see what is happening. Now, see, this is the reason why. The rich get richer while the poor get poorer. The rich understand what's happening in the market. The rest of us, we're totally blind. It's like another day, we're just going to work, we're watching TV, watching sports. We don't see that the second and third largest collapse just happened in back to back days. We got to wake up to what's happening because of don't wake up. A lot of people are going to be homeless. They're going to be on the street. As I continue to tell you guys on this channel, the government is never going to tell this to you. If you're waiting for Biden to tell this to you, you are sadly mistaken. You are so sadly mistaken. If you think that these politicians are going to stop everything, hey, stop the Oscars. Did you know that the second and third largest bank crash just happened in back-to-back -back days? Nobody's going to come and tell you that. This is the reason why you have to watch the market, guys. This is why the people that get rich are the ones that study the market and knows where it's going, okay? No one can predict with 100% accuracy when these banks are going to collapse and how. But I have been telling y'all for a long time that this would happen. But now the U.S. government is trying to avoid a 
bigger disaster. On Sunday, the Secretary of Treasury, Janet Yellen, made a statement that they're taking decisive action to protect the U.S. economy by strengthening public confidence in the banking system. Do you know the reason why Janet Yellen said that? It's because if everybody loses confidence in the banking system, it's going to make the economy crumble. If everybody is in panic and pulling their money out of the bank, this system as you know it can fall. I need y'all to be very aware. You see a lot of stuff happening right now around the world. Russia, Ukraine, China, all of these different countries gearing up for war. Meanwhile, back here, back in the United States, you've got the second and third largest bank collapse since the 2008 recession. I need y'all to be able to see something. When the government steps in, that's because it's May Day. Okay, the government is not just stepping in to bail anybody out. When is the last time the government ever gave you a large, big bailout? When is the last time the government started sending you billions of dollars to try to keep you afloat? It's a ripple effect. I need y'all to see this, okay? When we're talking about the Federal Reserve and the Secretary of Treasury stepping in, they're stepping in because they know that if they don't step in, the entire economy can crumble. So again, they made the statement just yesterday that they're going to intervene so that way you still have confidence in the banks. That way the U.S. banking system continues to perform its vital roles of protecting deposits. You put money into the bank, and you hope that the money that you put into the bank is going to stay there when you try to pull it out. Now, one thing that a lot of you might know is that banks make money off of you. Banks are loaning your money out to other people. So if the bank goes under, not only is your money at risk, but they're not able to give out any more loans. This is how the economy takes a hit. Think about how many times you try to get credit for things. You try to get loans. If you're buying a home, if you're buying a car, there's so many different things that we try to do around the banking system that if it happens to collapse, life as we know it can change. And so, one thing that is being done right now is the Federal Reserve and the U.S. government is really trying to stop the domino effect of banks fall. We've already seen the second and third largest bank failure happen in consecutive days. The reason why they're stepping in now yesterday is because they don't want to get the fourth largest, the fifth largest, the sixth largest, et cetera. When these things tend to happen, it creates a pain reaction. So let me summarize for you guys what happened with Silicon Valley Bank. The feds took over Silicon Valley Bank after shares failed 60%. This led to a mad dash of customers taking their money out of the bank. This same bank, just hours before the bank collapsed, was giving out bonuses. They were giving out bonuses to their employees, and these employees would get paid bonuses on the second Friday of every month. I want you all to notice, there are so many people that are getting fat, even though the system is crumbling. They had no business doing all of these bonuses, but they, a lot of the employees, they didn't see it coming. They didn't know what was happening.
Silicon Valley Bank had $42 billion in withdrawal in under 24 hours. Can I say that again? Silicon Valley Bank had people pulling out $42 billion under 24 hours. Can you imagine the nightmare that you created? Think about if you go to your local bank right now, everybody that you know is trying to pull out money. Hey, I need money over here. I need $1,000. I need money over here. I need $200,000. $42 billion in withdrawals in less than a day. Let me tell you why this happened. Silicon Valley Bank had bought $80 billion in 10-year treasury bonds when interest rates were low. If you watch my last podcast, I was telling you all about interest rates and how that's controlled by the Federal Reserve. When the interest rates were low in America, SVB bought $80 billion in 10-year treasury bonds. Silicon Valley Bank bought all these bonds. The problem is they ran into a money issue when clients started to withdraw too much money. Again, remember what I told you guys. You put money in the bank. They're not just letting it sit there. They're taking your money and they're loaning it out to other people. This is how banks make money. They make money off of you. You put your money in the bank. Your money is not making money for you like that. You're not earning a lot of interest. But the banks, the minute you take, you put in your deposit, they're already handing that money to someone else. They'll keep a certain amount just for protection. But what could happen if too many people pull out too much cash? This bank ran into a cash issue when their clients withdrew too much money. This forced them to sell those bonds. When they sell, when they sold those bonds, remember, this bank bought $80 billion in 10-year treasury bonds when the interest rates were low. They had to hurry up now and sell the bonds at a discount, which meant that they took an almost $2 billion loss. That's when you know what hit the fan. The minute they had to sell all those bonds just to be able to get some of their money back, that's when people panicked. They said, oh, my God, there's not enough money in the bank. This is about to crumble. Now, again, this is not just any bank. This is the Silicon Valley Bank, which means this is going to cause a ripple effect across the entire tech industry. When you hear the word Silicon Valley, you should think technology. Okay, Silicon Valley is where all of these major tech companies are at. Now, I want you to think about how many startup companies rely on Silicon Valley Bank. I told you the reason why a bank collapse causes a lot of job losses is because a lot of companies rely on the bank in order to function. It's rumored that some startups had as much as 25% of cash on hand. It's rumored that there's some companies that won't be able to process payroll. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine you work at a company and the company that you work at is tied to a bank that just went under and now you can't get paid? These are the types of things that are happening right now. So this could definitely set the tone for a large recession 
This can definitely set the tone for a crash to come. But here's the thing. These banks collapsed just yesterday. You had the third largest bank collapse yesterday. Friday, it was announced Silicon Valley Bank. It's too early to see what's going to happen. Right now, we know this is not looking good. That's why the government is stepping in. But a lot of times it can take weeks or even months for things to fully play out because we don't know how deep the rabbit hole goes. We don't understand fully what kind of ripple effect this is going to create. And so I just want you guys to think about this. With this bank run, that's happening right now at Silicon Valley Bank where Silicon Valley Bank has collapsed. This creates a lot of fear that it can spread to other banks. That's the reason why the government stepped in, especially with the third bank collapsing yesterday, okay? The reason why it's causing a lot of fear is because all of them are connected. See, they have something that's called debt derivatives. Debt derivatives means this person borrows from this person, this person borrows from this person. You got to rob from Peter to pay Paul. Now, if Peter don't have the money that you thought that he would have, then how's Paul going to get paid? And if Paul ain't paid, then he's coming for you. There's going to be problems. Paul owes somebody. Money, it's always flowing around in the economy. So the minute that it's stalled, it's like being on a highway that's stuck in traffic. There's no movement. You can't get to where you need to be because everything is bumper to bumper. What if a highway shut down? You can't go anywhere. You're done. That's how it's looking with the banks. And the reason why Janet Yellen made that statement about bringing confidence back into the banks among personal consumers. You, they want the people to still trust in the banking system because if the people don't trust in the bank, the crash happens right there. Money is the game. Money only works if everybody believes in the game. I want you to understand this. Uh, when you get like a paper dollar, the dollar itself is worth nothing. It's a fake currency. But the reason why money works is because everybody buys into it. Everybody goes on their online banking account and they see a couple numbers on the screen and they believe, oh, that allows me to do this. It allows me to do that. Because of this number that I can see on the screen, I can buy a house. I can pay my bills. I can put food on the table. It's all an idea. If people stop believing in the game, that's when you have pandemonium. And that's why the government needed to step in to stop other banks from collapsing. If other banks collapse, collapses, game over. And one of the things that happens a lot of times with fear is that it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. What I mean when I'm saying self-fulfilling prophecy, imagine that you are in a class and you got to take a test and you keep telling yourself, oh my God, I'm going to fail this test. Oh my God, I'm going to fail this test. This test is so hard. Now, you haven't even seen what this test looks like, but you psych yourself out so much that by the time the test comes, you're going to fail it no matter what. Why? Because you kept telling yourself that you would. That's how it is with the economy. If there is a domino effect where one bank falls, the minute you see the next bank fall right after that, everybody says, oh, my God, everything is shutting down. Oh, my God, here it is. It's the end of the world. <laughs> We're not going to be able to use money anymore. We're just going to need, you know, food and toilet paper. When people stop buying into the system, 
That's when the system no longer works. This is the matrix. The matrix is, the matrix is only as good as the belief of the masses of the people. But because you're in the system, you have to know how to work within the system and play the game in order for you to thrive. Rich people, they understand how this matrix works. They, this is the reason why a lot of wealthy people are business owners, guys. The reason why a lot of wealthy people are business owners is because they understand that the matrix rewards producers. They understand that even if you work extremely hard at a job, the system is not designed for the nine to five person to get wealthy. The system is designed for the nine to five person to maintain a living. It's only engineered for you to be able to get by from check to check. All of this is tied into the system. And if one part of it falls, everything else can fall right after that. Now, let me check out some of these comments. Um, Ariel says, oh, wow, I didn't think about that. It would be so crazy to see a company not make payroll because their bank collapsed. Yes, let's hope that that doesn't happen to too many banks for too many employees. Uh, Brandy Coke says, hi, my niece deposited her money in her account. When she went back to get some money out of her account, it wasn't there. Wow. Okay, so what bank is this? Uh, Brandy says, yes, it is. That's why people better not put all of their money into their accounts. They're taking their money. I'm going to talk about that in just a second. I'm going to walk you through five critical ways to protect your money during a collapse. Make sure that you stay on. Make sure that you support the channel, y'all. Smash the like button. Share this video. Now, again, as I said, what the government is trying to stop is fear. They want you to stay blind because that's how the machine keeps running. Obviously, stocks and cryptocurrency can see a significant drop. If that domino keeps falling, which the government is trying to avoid, stock market and the crypto market take a significant L. They're going to be looking at a large crash to come. Guys, this is all a part of the next level of chaos in the coming months and years. Everything that I've been warning you guys about on this channel is coming to pass. Now, even though it's difficult for the average person to prevent a bank collapse because we're just we're caught up in the matrix. There are certain steps that you can take to avoid a personal hit. The first thing that you want to do during a major bank collapse is to diversify your investments. You need to make sure that you have your money in different places to reduce your risk exposure. If you have all of your money in one place, you are taking a lot of risk because if that one industry goes under, so does all of your money. So now is the time to invest in a variety of assets, stocks, bonds, real estate, commodities. When I'm speaking about commodities, I'm speaking about gold. This is the exact reason why people own gold. Because if the US dollar crashes, you're going to need another form of currency to stay afloat. Guys, I want you to think about something. If there's no U.S. dollar, how are people going to eat? What are going to be some of the resources that people are going to want to trade for 
in order to get other resources. If you want food, if you want water, if you want the basic essentials of living, if the U.S. dollar was to collapse, do you have another way of being able to have something to trade with someone else to say, hey, I'm still trying to live. I'll give you this so I can eat. This is the type of thoughts that y'all got to be having in 2023. I'm just telling y'all. You see it. The writing is on the wall. Now is the time to wake up. You want to make sure that you diversify your investments. You want to spread your money around at this time. Okay. And one thing that I want to stress to y'all, buy the dip. I'm telling y'all what I'm going to do. I don't know what y'all going to do. But as for me and my house, this is exactly what I'm going to do. I am going to buy the dip. Buy the dip means when the stock market falls, and I know there's going to be a lot of change coming. If the stock market falls, that's when I'm going to be buying up what I can. While everything is at a deep discount, everything's going to be on sale, especially, again, these tech companies. Think about tech companies, guys. Google, Microsoft, Apple. You want to you want to be thinking about this. You got to be thinking ahead. See, more millionaires are made during a recession than at any other time because this creates a rare opportunity. For you to step in the game when everything is overpriced, you can't afford it. So maybe you wouldn't have been able to afford shares of Apple before, but you might be able to afford it now. Crash. Don't take all of your money out of your investments. Buy the dip. Now, let me say this the Generational Wealth Podcast is not official financial advice. It's not based on me as a licensed financial advisor. I'm just giving you guys personal talk. I'm just telling you guys what I'm going to do. This is for educational purposes only, entertainment purposes only. I just got to put that disclaimer out there. I'm not giving this as any kind of licensed advice, nor am I dictating what you should I'm simply telling you what I'm going to do during this time. And the reason why I'm positioned to do it is because I knew that this was coming. I knew it. <laughs> Leave me a comment, y'all. Let me know what y'all got going on. Let me know what you plan on doing at this time, okay? The first thing that you need to be doing is diversifying your investments. And again, I'm not just talking about Things with US dollars. This is why people own gold. This is going to create a once in a lifetime opportunity to buy real assets at a low price. The time, the best time to buy is when there's blood in the streets. I want y'all to think about this. The best time for you to buy is when everybody is selling. The best time for you to sell is when everybody is buying. If you follow the pack, you're going to get the pack's results. The masses of the people are going to suffer, but there's going to be a small percentage of people in the United States that's going to capitalize off of this significantly. There's going to be people that are going to come up like they never came up before. This is how it happens. So instead of you being in fear, you need to be looking for the opportunity. You need to make sure that you have a plan in place. So that way, when you see where the market is going, you already are ready to make the right move. The second thing that you need to have it's cash on hand. This is part of what Brandy was talking about. Do not have all of your cash in the bank. 
in the event of a bank collapse, it might be difficult to access your money. I want you to see what Brandy just said. My niece deposited her money in her account. And when she went back to get some money out of her account, the money wasn't there. That's why you need to keep some cash on hand. Keep it at the house. Have a very secure place for your money to go. Guys, all of this is emergency prep 101. In the event of a major emergency, you want to make sure that you have cash, food, water, uh, basic supplies. You want to make sure that if the banks collapse, if a grocery store isn't open, if there is another major pandemic, you want to make sure that you protect your house so you don't have to rely on other companies. You can have some money in different areas, but you need to have some cash on hand. And this is the reason why I'm always stressing the importance of your emergency fund. We're going to talk about that. This is the reason why you want to have always have some money set aside, guys. Stay ready so you don't have to get ready. Again, if the banks collapse, it's going to be difficult for you to have access to your money. You want to have cash on hand to just pay for some of your everyday expenses. If you need to get food, you can buy food without needing to pull out a debit card. If you need to be able to get gas, you're able to give actual dollars so that all of your money is not locked up in the bank. I'm telling you, there's going to be a lot of people that don't see this show. And there's going to be a lot of people that are suffering. And for all of my big timers that are out there, if you have more than 250 thousand dollars in a bank make sure you start to pull that out remember fdic insurance only goes up to two hundred and fifty thousand dollars so if some of you guys have more than two hundred and fifty thousand dollars sitting in the bank you need to make sure that you Pull that out, okay? You want to move that money into other accounts. This is the reason why you got to follow step one of diversifying. Because let's say that you have a million dollars in the bank. You might not want to pull out a million dollars in cash, one, because it's going to be very hard for you to do because there are a lot of laws with the United States Customs about being able to out money in those amounts. There are money laundering uh, laws against that. What you want to do is if you have a million dollars in the bank, you want to start taking that money and redistributing it throughout different accounts, different investments, and make sure that every account is below $250,000. Dollars. Now, this leads to the third piece. Don't keep all of your money in one bank. So, if you are this person that has over $250,000 in the bank, you want to take some of that money out of your first bank and then put it into a second bank. You want to spread your bank deposits across multiple banks. So that way you don't lose it all if one bank collapses. Guys, I hope that you take instant action. I hope that you really do take immediate action on the things that I'm telling you guys right now. Because for a lot of us, this could be life changing. Okay. I want you to notice these three steps that I just showed you. It goes hand in hand. You want to make sure that you diversify, have your money in different places. That's step one. You want to make sure that you keep some cash on hand. That's step two. You have more money than uh, 250000 in the bank. 
you need to start moving that money around, whether you're putting into different investments or whether you're putting it into different banks. Don't have all of your money in one bank. Guys, I'm gonna tell you this right now. I don't keep all of my money in one bank. That's a recipe for disaster. If you have money, I'm saying you got money stored for months. Some of you might have money stored for years. You need to, this is the reason why you got to diversify. Diversify, 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 diversify. Not everything in one place. Not everything in one asset class. When I'm saying asset class, I'm talking about things like stocks. Don't just, don't just have your money in stocks only. Even with the stocks that you have, don't just only have one kind of stock. But what happens if you only have tech stocks? Well, if there is a tech crash, that means you could lose all of your money in the stock market because you're only going after one asset class. You want to be thinking about different kinds of stocks. I have tech stocks, medical stocks, uh, stocks that are based around agriculture. You want to make sure that you have money in different places because you never know what's going up and you never know what's going down, guys. And you would be surprised how the markets shift. You want to have money in different banks. The fourth thing that I need you guys to do, please stay informed. I'm going to keep y'all up to date like I've been doing. Please make sure that you subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you can receive an alert whenever I do another show. I do these shows Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Stay up to date on what's happening. This is the time, guys, where you cannot zone out. I know, yeah, I don't know everything about money. I don't know anything about debt. Now is the time. You got to be able to have some kind of knowledge on this, y'all. You got to be able to have some kind of idea of what's happening. Because if you have no idea what's happening, you're a sitting duck. If you have no idea that these banks are collapsing, that means it's your money getting took. It means you're the person that has money at the bank and you're going to be the first one that's going to be facing damage. You could be someone that's working for a company that's tied to a bank that goes under and now they can't make payroll. This is the reason why you've got to have multiple streams of income. The average millionaire has seven different streams of income. That's for a reason. Why don't think they're millionaires? The reason why they're millionaires is because they're forward thinking. They don't think, oh man, I can just stay at a job for the rest of my life and I'm good. I'm secure. Oh man, I can just have all of my money in one bank for the rest of my life. I'm good. I'm secure. I'm going to tell you all this again. I have one bank where I have my checking and basic savings. I have another bank for my long-term savings. I have another bank for my business banking. So even if my long-term bank went under, I'm still able to pull money from the business bank. If I lose money from the business bank, I'm still able to pull money from my day-to-day -day checking account. You need money in different places. You need different income streams in different places. This will keep your family protected. And this is the reason why I speak so much about having an emergency fund. But before we go there, I just want you all to consider this. When you stay informed about everything that's happening right now, that's what's going to help you make great decisions about your investments. How are you going to know how to invest if you don't have any idea of what's going on in the markets? That's why you got to stay focused at this time. Even if you guys can't watch the stream live, 
Make sure that you watch it tomorrow. Make sure that you watch it later today. Make sure that y'all are staying locked in on what's going on. All right. Just play it in the background while you're at work, while you're driving to work, coming from work, wherever you got to do while you're getting ready for work. I don't know. Hell, just listen. The fifth thing that you got to do is have an emergency fund. Guys, bare minimum, you need to have three to six months worth of living expenses saved in a separate account. Again, if the banks are collapsing, you don't need all your money in one account. Set up your emergency fund separately. Okay. So when we talk about this emergency fund, guys, you want to be thinking about job loss. You want to be thinking, man, what would happen if I got into a medical emergency? If I didn't have the ability to make more money because I just lost my job due to a major crash, do I have enough money to be able to afford my cost of living, to afford any emergency that comes my way? Guys, most people don't have enough money to where if their car broke down on the side of the road, they get it fixed right then. Do you know what most people would do? They would go into debt. But how can you go into debt if the banks aren't lending money? If the banks collapse, where are you going to be getting the loan from? All of your family members and friends, they're struggling too. They're trying to make it. They're, they got their money in banks that are going under. So again, stay ready. I know a lot of y'all think, oh my God, this is all doomsday talk. This is all apocalypto. I'm not talking about things that could happen. I'm telling you about what has happened. We literally just watched the second and third largest bank collapse in United States history. And it just happened in a matter of days. Have your emergency fund ready. And here's a sixth. I got a bonus for y'all. Okay. As a bonus, as a way of saying thank you for watching this and taking your life seriously, make sure that you have insurance coverage. I've been telling you guys about insurance and how this is the key to building wealth for some time. I'm going to tell y'all something. If y'all don't have insurance and these banks start collapsing, I feel sorry for you. Just keep it at a buck. The only thing that can protect your finances in this economy during a market crash is insurance. This is the reason why when it comes to the banks, what's the only way that people are still able to get money now out of their bank during a collapse? FDIC insurance. I told you guys, FDIC insurance has a limit. That's why you need more insurance. So I'm going to put this link out here. So that way you guys can set up your call with me, okay? I'm a licensed insurance agent in multiple states. I'm not just talking about something I read out of a book. I can actually help you get set up with insurance this week. Every week I would come on this platform and I would tell you guys, wealthy people have insurance. Rich people use insurance to create generational wealth. How do you think the Rockefeller family kept all that money from the time of John D. Rockefeller all the way until today? Insurance. How do you think that wealthy families buy up all this real estate? They use insurance. They're able to pull money from their insurance policy. And they're able to start businesses. They're able to invest in real estate. They're able to become their own bank. The rich are not even worried about a lot of these banks going under like that. Why? 
because rich people become their own bank. The banking system is set up for the masses of the people that don't have empires. But I'm trying to show you there's little known secrets that most of us have never been taught about how wealthy people use insurance to create a fortune. Most of y'all have been taught that insurance is only something that your family gets after you die. Most of y'all have never been taught that wealthy families use insurance while they're still living. That's why they call it life insurance. They're using the insurance while they still have life that helps to keep them alive. So guys, the link is in the comments, okay? All you gotta do is click that link and make sure that you set up uh, and uh, your session with me. It's a free session, guys, okay? This is all for you and your protection. My family is already insured, but now is the time that you guys really need to be thinking about this. If y'all ain't been getting serious, man, about your uh, money and creating your generational wealth, now is the time because the economy is it was all in a bad spot before this happened. And it's only going to get worse. It's going to get worse before it gets better. Okay. So again, when we talk about insurance, you want to make sure that you have necessary insurance coverage. What do I mean when I say necessary insurance coverage? You know, I sit down with a lot of clients and they talk about how they already have insurance through their job. But what happens if you get laid off from your job? Then you, you don't have no insurance at all. You're out of luck. You up the creek without a river. You got to make sure that you have insurance policies separate from your nine to five job. Because if there is a market collapse, chances are a lot of people will be out of work. You need to set up a separate insurance policy, not just the bare minimum of what these jobs provide. A lot of these jobs don't even provide more than $50,000 worth of insurance. That's nothing. You want to make sure that your family can survive for years in your absence. You need a lot of insurance. Listen, y'all, if you have a child, and you want to be able to afford for them to go to college if that's what they want to do. Right, right there, you need at least $100,000 just to afford that college plan. Because by the time that they go to college, the average public school tuition over four years is going to cost $100,000. That's just for college. We ain't even talked about day to day expenses, buying a house. Paying off any debt, you need insurance, not just life insurance. That's very important. You need life insurance, health insurance, and property insurance to protect your assets in case of unexpected emergencies. Guys, we don't know what could happen from this. Remember, I showed you at the start of this podcast. What happened during the 2008 recession? The 2008 recession was sparked because of the housing crash. This is not just about banks. Make sure that you have property insurance. You got to make sure that you're insured, guys, because how are you going to be able to pay your mortgage if you're out of, job, out of a job for six months? How are you going to be able to take out loans if the banks aren't giving out any more credit? These are all things that you got to be very mindful of, guys. We are living in the last days, okay? So the best way for you to prepare for a bank collapse is for you to have a solid plan that includes diversifying your money, having cash reserves, and emergency funds. This is where you're taking the money that you've been saving up, spreading it around in different places. If you don't have any money saved up, now is the time for you to get started. The less money that you have saved up, 
the more critical it is that you have insurance because you're going to need to be able to tap into money from somewhere that you don't already have. With the money that you have, spread it around. Keep some of your cash on hand but at the house. Okay, uh, I have a safe. You need to make sure that you have different things in your house to protect yourself, guys. Okay, I know a lot of y'all know about that money under the mattress. You need to have these things, and you need to have an emergency fund. Three to six months, bare minimum. Stay informed. Stay watching this channel. I'm going to give you guys up to date news on what's happening. And not only am I going to give you guys updates on what's happening, as always, I'm going to show you guys how to adjust and pivot just like this. Okay. So hopefully you guys really enjoyed tonight's show. If you guys got a lot of value from everything that I talked about tonight, please do me a favor, make a donation. Your donations help to keep this show going. Okay, I work really hard, guys. Try to give you as much value as I can per show, but I cannot do it without your support. Okay, so if you love this content and you want to see more of it, please tap the dollar icon directly below. If you like using Cash App, dollar sign Gen Wealth Podcast. If you want to give a donation on YouTube, even after the stream is over, all you got to do is just go to uh, the Super Thanks. Brandy Coke said, thank you. I enjoyed your live. Thank you so much. And I hope that I see you uh, on the next show. I like to do these shows uh, Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. I do Monday and Wednesday evening. Fridays, I do it a little bit earlier. Make sure that you like. Make sure that you subscribe and turn on the notification bell so that way you can receive an alert whenever I do another show. All right. Hey, guys, I love you all. I'm praying for you all. Uh, really stay focused during these times. Please do not allow yourself to get distracted and caught up in a lot of foolishness. Protect your families, guys, okay? Because the government's not going to tell you everything that you need to know. You need to find this out on own. You need to find the information out here and you need to watch the market. I'm going to keep you posted and Lord willing, I'll see you guys on the next show this Wednesday. Until next time, y'all, get focused on protecting your money. All right. Keep pushing. Stay safe. Out